if you've ever watched one of my videos and enjoyed it, please stop what you're doing right now and do me a favor, go click that subscribe button. It costs you nothing, doesn't affect you in any way, but it really helps me out, it helps my channel grow. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. And now back to your regular scheduled program. The first five minutes or so of the movie all takes place right here at the interchange of the 110 and the 101 freeway. Bill, better known as Defense, is stuck in traffic underneath that bridge on the left side of the fork in the road. Right here in front of me is pretty much where his car would have been sitting. Pay attention to those yellow road signs up there. Those can be seen in the movie. However, the call box that was seen in the movie is no longer there. Once Defense has finally had enough, he gets out of his car and he tells the motorist behind him that he's going home. He goes over that wall right there and heads off that way, crossing over the interchange to the 101 freeway, which has zero traffic on it in the movie. Prendergrass would have been somewhere right back here in this area when he sees the motorcycle cop go past him, heading towards Defense's abandoned car. Prendergrass and the CHP officer push the abandoned car up this embankment on the side of the road. Right there at the end is where they leave Defense's car and the highway patrol motorcycle tips over. I don't know about you, but I cannot watch this scene without getting stressed out. I know that's the point of this scene and I feel like they do a really good job getting that across. We get a shot very similar to this one when we see Defense's ex-wife and daughter walking home right past this building on the left side. Now in the movie, this building looks nothing like what we see here, but believe it or not, it's the exact same building. They just recently remodeled the entire thing, but you can still match up the shot with those palm trees, lamp posts, and this telephone pole. They hear the telephone ring and they move right down this way to their house, which is right over here, but unfortunately the only thing that looks the same is the number 18 on the gate. It seems that the original house was torn down and rebuilt sometime around 1998. And besides the front door and the window to the left of it being in basically the same place, nothing about the new house looks like the one that we see in the movie. But you can still imagine Defense's ex-wife running out this front gate and then making a left onto Speedway. The apartment building just to the right side of the house can briefly be seen when they're walking home and it looks exactly the same today. Right there on the corner is the first place that we see Defense using a payphone to call his ex-wife. Now at the time that apartment building wouldn't have been there, that was just an empty field. These houses across the street can be seen in the background while he's on the phone. After he realizes he doesn't have any more change for the payphone, he walks across the street to Bob's Food Market, which would have been right here on the corner where this park now sits. A little bit later in the movie, Prendergast comes here to talk to Mr. Lee. He then walks up this hill on the side of the 101 freeway. After realizing that he knows who it is that they're looking for, he yells down to Mr. Lee, who would have been right over here on the corner sweeping the sidewalk. This street does look a little bit different because of that newer apartment building. However, that storm drain down at the end matches up perfectly. So here's the interesting thing about Bob's Food Market. It was never actually here. What you see in the movie was a facade that was built just for the exterior shots. However, there is a real Bob's Food Market and that's where they shot the interiors. And this is it, this is the real Bob's Market. Now the facade that you see in the movie was modeled after this building and the interiors were shot right here inside this store. They just built a fake front to cover up that garage style door. Right back there at that refrigerator is where Defense would have grabbed that ice cold soda and placed it on his face. Now obviously these are not the same refrigerators, the ones in the movie were in old school style and these are a much newer refrigerator. Right there is where he would have been smashing the donuts and the batteries he would have been standing right next to that white pole. And right over here is the counter that Mr. Lee would have been standing behind. Now pretty much right where this display case is, is where Mr. Lee would have been laying on the floor after he gets attacked by defense. 
Now, like I said, in the movie, there's a fake front to the store covering up that garage style door. But other than that, it looks pretty much the same in here. Now, this is the next place where we see defense on a payphone trying to call his ex-wife while some gang members stand in the background there watching him. Right over here, this is Edgeware Road, and it used to cross 1st Street and run right along here. And this is where that hill was that we see defense walking up. You can even see a sign for Edgeware Road in the shot. Right over here is where the gang members would have been standing. You can tell by the way the sidewalk curves. And the DWP building back there can be seen in the background behind them. This entire area now is Vista Hermosa Park. But right up there where you see all those bushes and trees, that's where the hill was where Defense is sitting on the cement steps. So I'm now on Edgeware Road on the other side of Vista Hermosa Park. And right here in front of me, this is the shot we get of downtown Los Angeles while Defense is sitting on those cement steps. So like I said, this is Edgeware Road and it used to run straight through here. So pretty much where you see those trees, that's right where Defense would have had that run in with the two gang members. When the gang members are driving around looking for revenge, they're driving on this street when they see defense directly in front of them talking on a payphone. Now pay attention to this building on the left because it can clearly be seen in the movie and that door and small window next to it match up perfectly. Now once they spot defense, they pull over to get ready to get their revenge and they park pretty much right where this black car is. The theater that Defense is standing in front of has been torn down, but he would have been pretty much directly in front of me talking on a payphone. The gang members come off of Fickett Street, making a left onto Cesar Chavez, doing a drive-by in front of the theater before swerving back onto Fickett Street and crashing their car. And right here is where their car would have been crashed. That lamppost can be seen directly behind their car in the movie. As the camera pans around to show defense, we get a shot of this Jesus mural, but the building that it was on has since been torn down. As defense walks off this way back onto Cesar Chavez, we see Angie running right past him crying. That small red building is exactly the same as it was in the movie, and the building all the way to the left side says wash on it in the movie, and today it's still a laundromat. We get a shot of this building in the movie when the police are walking down into the park to break up the fight. At the time, it was a thrifties. We get a shot of the MacArthur Park Lake, which at the time was drained and under construction. The camera moves across Wilshire and right over here to where the playground used to be. He would have been leaning up against a fence that was around the playground right there watching the kids play and that's when the homeless man approaches him and asks him for some money. And the way that you can tell that this is the right spot is by this structure that can be seen in the background behind him. They walk right here along this path moving away from the playground towards the Wilshire Tunnel. Right there, that's the Wilshire Tunnel that the homeless man in defense walk through. They come out of the other side of the tunnel right here, and the homeless man tells defense that he should give him one of his bags. As they stand here arguing about it, this building across the lake can be seen in the background. Once the homeless man realizes all that was in there was his lunch, he gets angry and throws an apple at defense, who's walking away down this path just before turning up this staircase. I'm sure most of you recognize this next location. This was the restaurant used for Whammy Burger. And as you can see, it looks almost exactly like it did in the movie. Now it is missing that giant hamburger on the roof and the big hamburger mural out here in the parking lot. But other than that, it looks pretty much exactly the same. 
Even the sign over here looks the same. They just swapped out the Angelo's Burger sign for the Whammy Burger sign in the movie. Now they did film the restaurant interiors inside this building, so let's head inside and take a look. And there it is, there's Whammy Burger. How awesome. I can picture Defense standing at the counter telling Sheila he wants to order some breakfast. And they even have a plaque on the wall that says the movie Falling Down with Michael Douglas was filmed here on May 12, 1992. Of course, Defense would have been standing right up there at the counter with Sheila behind the counter taking his order. And Rick, the manager, comes from that kitchen door right there. Now the layout of the restaurant has changed a little bit. They got rid of the tables and chairs and it's all booths now, but you can still pretty much make out where everything happened in this restaurant. This is the restaurant that they use for the exteriors of the restaurant that Prendergast and Sandra meet at for lunch. They would have come right out the front door right there, walking down the sidewalk, heading towards the parking lot, and stopping right in front of this wall to have a conversation. Sandra's partner would have been at the car right over there by that apartment building. And of course Prendergast would have been standing right in front of this wall when he tells Sandra that he loves his wife. Defense crosses Wilshire, walking right past that giant camera, the old darkroom building, and he heads to the swap meet right next door. This building here was a swap meet, and Defense heads to a table that was on the left side of this door and purchases a gift for his daughter. And of course, right down the street at the end of the block, we see the man out in front of this building protesting and holding a sign that says, not economically viable. Now the building's changed a lot, it's a post office now, and the funny thing is, it actually looked more updated in the movie than it does now. But some of the stuff out front does look the same, we get some shots of him protesting right in front of that lamp post. We get a shot of him similar to this, with the camera looking towards La Brea, but all those buildings that were in the background behind him have been torn down. Now although the building's been completely remodeled, it still has some of that green marble that we see in the movie. The police car eventually comes down Wilshire and stops right across the street from Defense and the man says to him, Don't forget me. Now, this is the parking lot where we see Defense using the payphone before he shoots up the phone booth. Across the street you get a shot of the world famous Sunset Laugh Factory in the background we also get a really good shot of this larger building on the right where the Virgin Megastore used to be. Now I arrived today to find out that half the shopping center is gated off and appears that it might be getting torn down. All the businesses are gone except for the McDonald's. But you can see right here this is where the El Pollo Loco used to be that you can see in the movie. Now the greatest thing about this scene is in the background behind him there's a giant inflatable butt that says Sir Mix-a-Lot on it. How many of you noticed that? If we look through the gate right here, that building that says ice cream, that's where the giant inflatable butt would have been, and Subway would have been just to the right of that, and El Pollo Loco would have been to the left. We can see that red lamp post in the movie next to him, and the phone booth would have been just to the right of that, basically where that big machine is. For some odd reason, there was a phone booth right in the middle of a parking lot. This is the Army Surplus Store in Silver Lake, and this has been here my entire life. I've driven by this thousands of times, and I was completely shocked to arrive today and find out that it's out of business, and it appears that they're inside uh, demolishing the interior. And this is, of course, the Surplus Store, where Defense meets the Nazi store owner. We see him walking down the sidewalk right here, before stopping at the corner and checking the hole in his shoe, and then heading inside the store. All right, let's see if we can get a peek of the inside of the building. Oh, wow. It's completely gutted inside. They tore out everything. Even the loft in the back is gone. Wow. I was really hoping I'd get to see those yellow rockets that we see in the movie. Well, this was a total surprise and a complete bummer. This is where they filmed the scene with the road construction and all the cars were backed up into this intersection right here. We get a good shot of this apartment building in the beginning of that scene. 
And right over here is where the man was sitting in his car honking his horn and defense walks up and punches him in the face before walking right past this church and we get a good shot of this apartment building over here. A defense is standing right here in the middle of the street. The kids are on their bikes right over here and we get a shot of this neighborhood. On the other side of defense we can see this freeway in the background. He's standing right here and he fires the rocket straight down the middle of the street. Pacific Palms was the golf course that Defense is passing through before he meets resistance from a couple of golfers. Now this is a really huge golf course and the entire fence going around the whole thing looks exactly like this. So it's hard to tell exactly where he climbed the fence, but it looks just like this. You see him climb up the gate using the signs and he climbs up right on top of one of these brick pillars. And you can see some of these drainage holes in the shot as well. Over on this side of the course it has some flowers like the ones that we see in the movie. This building here can only be seen from a distance. It's the hotel inside the golf course and it can be seen for a split second in the movie behind the two golfers. Well this is probably the biggest disappointment of all. The Venice Fishing Pier has been closed for over a year and it was supposed to be open by now, but it's still under construction. But right down there at the end of the pier is where the finale of the movie takes place. And Defense finally meets up with his ex-wife and daughter. All these buildings can be seen in the background when Defense is running down the pier, especially this building right here. Right down there at the end of the pier is where Defense gets shot and then falls into the water. I was really looking forward to walking around the pier and giving you a close up look of the end of the movie. Eventually when the pier opens back up, I'm going to come back down here and shoot a follow up to this video. Alright, that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all next time.